Hello, we are Ross and Manny de Lizarriturri, founders of the Renewable Energy Owners Coalition of America, a group of solar owners and renewable energy advocates. Welcome to Know Before You Go Solar. We are here to help you go solar the right way. Let's start at the beginning with the energy pyramid. Number five is where your solar panels come in. But what about one to four? Most people ignore these steps and go right for the solar. But if you go step by step, chances are you will save a lot of money. Have an energy audit done. This analysis will tell you what energy issues your house has. After all doors and windows have been closed to seal the house as much as possible, an energy auditor may use a blower door that will force air through your home's leaking spots. Energy conservation doesn't cost you a dime. It is more of a change in behavior, like doing laundry with cold water, or turning off the lights when you're leaving a room, or only running your dishwasher when it's full. Energy efficiency. When old appliances die, Buy new, energy-efficient ones. If you need to replace your water heater, consider a heat pump. Be aware of the time of day you do things that require a lot of energy, like using your clothes dryer or plugging in your electric vehicle. Try to avoid doing those things during peak usage, like when you get home from work, when everyone else is doing the same thing too, between 4 and 9. Now you are ready to install solar panels. Let's take a closer look at what an energy audit can provide. Usually the highest energy cost in the home comes from heating it in the winter and cooling it in the summer. An energy auditor uses thermal imaging to detect areas in the home that have leaks. Typical leakage areas are embedded light fixtures and attic access traps, for example. The Energy Audit Report will give you an overview of the areas in your home that need improvement. Two of the most cost-effective energy conservation measures you can take are setting your thermostat correctly and upgrading your lighting from incandescent bulbs to LED bulbs. Look for rebates offered by your utility. There will be a wealth of information on how to save money through energy conservation techniques, as well as a host of energy efficiency rebates. In Pueblo, the San Isabel Electric Association's list is expansive and impressive. Everything from rebates on Energy Star appliances, to insulation upgrades, to money back for buying an EV and installing a home charging station. If you are a homeowner interested in going solar, you can find out if your home is right for solar with Google's Project Sunroof. Just enter your address and your average monthly electric bill and Project Sunroof will do some initial calculations for you. The yellow roof areas have high solar exposure. The purple roof areas have low solar exposure. If you live in a condo or apartment, or if your home is not well suited for rooftop solar, there are other alternatives available to you, such as community solar. Contact your local utility to find out how you can participate in community solar. So, when a solar salesman comes knocking on your door, ask these questions. How long have you been in business? Are you licensed to do business in my state? Do you have a local office in my town? As with any major home improvement project, purchasing from the right installer or contractor is every bit as important as the product that you're purchasing. Get a list of references and call them. Be wary of any really low bids. That's why getting three bids will give you a better idea of what to expect. 
and get the guarantee and every interaction in writing. Are there any issues that I need to address before installing solar? Is my roof okay? Are there too many trees? Does the bid include the total cost of the project, material and labor? What happens if there are unforeseen problems? For example, one of Ryoka's members had a service call and was charged for travel time when the supplier had advertised itself as a local. Does the bid include a time frame? In jobs that take too long, you may wind up still paying for your electric bill and your finance bill from the solar installation. Find out who pays for the double billing. Are your installers NABCEP certified? The North American Board of Certified Energy Practitioners, NABCEP, is the most respected, well-established, and widely recognized national certification organization for professionals in the field of renewable energy. NABCEP is the only certification program with an enforceable code of ethics holding unethical installers accountable. Having NAPSEP certified professionals on the job will ensure a sense of confidence. Will there be a master electrician on the job? A master electrician must be on site to make all the electrical connections. A federal tax credit for your solar installation is available in some cases. You must pay enough federal taxes to be eligible for the tax credit. Federal tax credits are still substantial for 2020 and 2021. If you qualify, you can save 26% if you install solar in 2020. On a $30,000 installation, that is a savings of $7,800. Contractors may use confusing terms. This is a tax credit, not a rebate. If you don't make enough money to pay federal taxes, the solar tax credit will not apply. Contractors almost always give you the bid assuming that you will get the tax credit. Ask to see the bid both ways, with the tax credit and without it. A rooftop solar system is a big investment. Even if you do not usually go to an accountant, it might be a good idea to do it this time. Get everything, every interaction in writing. So today we're with Judy Knight, a Rioka member. Uh, good afternoon, Judy. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, I met Judy because Judy had a massive problems with her solar company, and Black Hills Energy sent her to us to try to help her. So thank you for doing this today with us, Judy, to help somebody else avoid some of the problems you had. <laughs> I First, hope so. <laughs> I hope so too. First, um, what kind of tax credit did the contractor tell you to expect? Well, the way it was explained to me was it was a rebate, thirty percent of the cost of the solar, and I would get that back at, at the end of tax season. And that didn't work out that way. They told me my payments would be one hundred forty-four dollars a month. But they didn't tell me that I would have to take that money and turn around and put it on the loan. But I couldn't get that money anyway because I don't owe that amount to be able to get the tax credit. So I got nothing. Okay. And, and this is a problem with many companies. They tell you, you assume you're going to get the tax credit, but they called it a tax a rebate. Okay. So misinformation. Yes. Um, would you have gone solar if you were not going to receive that tax credit? Well, no, because they told me my payments would be $144 a month. Without that tax credit, my payments are actually going to be over $200 a month. So, not probably not. Before you started your project, I know you told me you asked if your house was okay the way it was for a solar installation. And did that turn out to be the case? No. My breaker box was not correct. It cost me $200 to get that 
fix. They told me I would have to move the meter outside at a cost of $2,500. And I refused to do it because they told me it was okay. Well, um, it, Black Hills got involved in it and, said, and found somebody that would do it for $1,500. And then the solar company said they would pay half. So I agreed to do it. So it cost me $1,500 to move it, and I eventually got half of it back. But that took quite a while from it what I remember. It took quite a while. That's where the meter used to be, and they said it couldn't be in this room because it was enclosed, but the room was here when I bought the house 33 years ago. Mark Eastland from Black Hills got involved in the moving of the meter inside, and so the meter that was in that room we were just in is now this meter right here. So what happened when they installed the solar meter? <laughs> well they installed it behind some bushes that I had out there and when uh, the inspector came he said that the bushes would have to come down. Okay so what other billing issues did you have with this company? Well it took seven months for the solar to actually be set up and running and in that amount of time I was paying interest to the finance company and paying my solar bills I mean excuse me my bills to Black Hills Energy so I was basically double paying bills for seven months well they told me they would pay back the first six months of payments to the finance company <laughs> and they weren't doing it and then I, I got put in contact with you and you got involved and I did get back that money. So <clears throat> what impressed me, Judy, as we were going back and forth with your solar company, it impressed me that you had all your emails, you had all the proof of all these things we've discussed today had happened to you. So um, what advice would you give to someone that uh, was going to install solar? Well, I would say check out probably at least three different companies and and really talk to them and find out what their price is, what you're going to get, get everything in writing because I did get everything in writing and um, then you can decide if you want to do it or not because what I was told didn't end up being the right now, time. You mentioned to me that a neighbor asked you about going solar and what did you advise your neighbor? I told him if you're really seriously thinking about going solar to do it locally. Find somebody here in Pueblo. Oh, you did not use a local installer? No, the people I went through were from out of state even. Okay, and they had no local presence? No. What about the misinformation about the tax credit? What would you advise people to do about that when they're told? I would say Go to an accountant and find out if you're really going to be able to get that tax credit because I just took their word for it. I didn't realize it was going to be a tax credit and that I was not going to be eligible for it because I didn't owe that kind of money. Exactly. That's perfect. Well, Judy, thank you so much. I'm really hoping that the things, I'm sorry for what's happened to you, but I'm hoping that those things will help someone else. I hope so. <laughs>
We'll finish this presentation showing you a living example of knowing before going solar. Sheldon Braun, a Ryoka board member, did everything correctly right from the beginning and saved a ton of money. Hi, um, we're here with Sheldon Braun, a Ryoka member. And um, we, Sheldon is a wonderful example of doing solar the right way. Um, Sheldon, why don't you tell us about the first thing that you did when you uh, decided that you wanted to go solar? Go and get three estimates. And, and, and uh, how long have you had solar panels on your home? We put it almost a year. I called up Black Hills and they offered a free energy uh, audit. And so I, I went and, and, uh, and did that. After the off audit, Black Hills um, offered me uh, to re-insulate my attic, to add more insulation onto my attic to bring the value up to R38. It's the 600 square feet right in the living room and kitchen area. Um, I rented the machine and, and got the insulation myself. And how about your um, appliances? Did you do anything about them? The refrigerator, um, when we moved in over here, it was a 26 cubic foot double door refrigerator that seemed to run all the time, um, even though it was five years old. So we went and repla replaced it with this energy efficient one. Um, this is a 21 cubic foot and it's plenty big for my wife and I um, and it costs $48 a year to run. Uh, this is one of those heat pump water heaters. On, on, uh, to run this thing a, a whole year is $114. The propane tank that I replaced this with had a sticker that says it costs six hundred and thirty four dollars to run. This is one of those no energy efficient washer and dryers. This costs about twenty one dollars a year to run um, and and um, it saves about two thousand gallons of water a year also. I've been aware of the Black Hills energy had rebates available, but I, frankly, I've never met someone that's taken advantage of so many. Tell, give us a rundown of what you've saved with those rebates. Well, for my HVAC system, because I have a SEER 19 uh, air conditioner and then the furnace is really high uh, efficiency, I got $650 back for that. I got $500 back for the water heater and I got $224 back for the insulation I put in the attic. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's a nice savings. Right now in my attic, it's 114 degrees. I, I use a lot of, I try to use uh, passive solar to heat my house as much as I can. Um, so what I do is I have a fan attached to a, uh, um, a vent that goes down into my uh, basement and I, can turn the switch on and right now I'm bringing that 114 degree air down into my basement. Anytime it's really sunny and it's about 50 degrees during the winter time, it gets above 100 degrees in the attic. And I'm just recouping some of that heat that the sun gives us. Here's where the uh, hot air is comes out. I haven't put the vent on yet, but you can feel, uh, I can feel that the air is nice and warm down here. It'll raise it, it's 62 degrees right now in the uh, basement, but it'll probably, if I leave them on for four hours, it'll raise it up to 65 or 66 degrees down here. And it heats up the concrete floor and the concrete walls in here. Also, another thing I do is, is all my electronics, I unplug it. These heat, these uh, power strips are, are really nice to do that. You can do it all at once. And then also all my lighting in here is LED lighting. Okay. So, um, Sheldon, tell me, do, do you think that the different improvements that you made meant that you needed less solar panels? Um, there's 12 panels on the roof, and, and originally there was going to be 20. And I've went through the whole year uh, without uh, having to pay an electric bill besides my customer uh, uh, one, you know, $9.13. That's excellent, even in the winter time. Even in the winter. Uh, how big is your house? Um, it's 1,300 square feet on the uh, first floor, and then I have a finished basement, but we don't really heat it during the winter time, it's just uh, um, the upstairs that we live in. 
most so of the time. So you think your electric bills would have been fifteen hundred dollars just for the second floor? Well, all the utilities altogether would have been probably been about fifteen hundred dollars. Wow, big savings. And now we'll be happy to take some questions.